This is Geometry, Chapter 13, Section 6, in which we will study probabilities of mutually exclusive events. Okay. Two events are called mutually exclusive if they cannot happen at the same time. Okay. Um, anything that doesn't have any overlapping nature would be considered uh, mutually exclusive. Uh, in general, your class schedule is mutually exclusive. You can't be in English class and geometry class at the same time. So those two events would be mutually exclusive. A card, unless they've made a big mistake at the printer, cannot be both a spade and a heart at the same time. A number cannot be both even and odd. Those are mutually exclusive events. Okay. Let's see if we can determine if some things are in fact mutually exclusive. Suppose I'm going to select an integer from 1 to 100. Okay. What's the, uh, or is it mutually exclusive to get a number divisible by 5? and a number divisible by 10. That is to say, are any numbers in there divisible by both 5 and 10? Sure there are. 10 is divisible by both, 20 is divisible by both, 30, 40, 50, all the way up. So this situation is not mutually exclusive. Okay. Drawing a card out of a deck and getting an ace or a king. Well, unless they've screwed up at the printer, you can't get both an ace and a king on the same card. So that situation is indeed mutually exclusive, because you can't get both of them. Now that we have a better idea of the difference between being mutually exclusive or not, Let's look at the probability that either or happens. If you're looking at two different things and you want the probability of A or B, okay, then what we're talking about is the sum of their probabilities. This is where there's no overlap to consider now. They're exclusive events. Such as here, if we roll two dice, I want to know the probability of getting a sum of 9 or getting doubles. Okay. Well, to get 9 or doubles, you can't get 9 and also get doubles at the same time. 9 is an odd number. We don't have 4.5 on our dice. So it would be exclusive. We need the probability of getting a 9 or the probability of getting doubles. Well, in the last video, I gave you the nice probability chart to look at for rolling two dice. Probability of getting a 9 was 4 chances out of 36. Probability of getting doubles is 6 chances out of 36. There's 6 places in that chart where we have doubles. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, and 6, 6. That adds up to 10 out of 36, which reduces to 5 eighteenths, or the equivalent decimal. Okay. When things are not mutually exclusive, then your probability has to take into account the overlapping case. Okay. Probability that A or B occurs is going to be the probability of A plus the probability of B minus where they both happen. Okay, what, what's happening here is you're counting things twice. And you have to take out the second time you counted them. And it'll make some sense here when you look at what's going on with these numbers. I've got a list of numbers here from 1 to 20. I want to know the probability that what I get is either odd or a multiple of 3. Well, there are some odd numbers on here. 
One is odd, three is odd, five is odd, seven, nine. Yes, I know, bear with me. Uh, 14. Not 20. Okay, I'm going to spread these out a little bit so we can examine them. Okay, I think you would agree with me that everything I pulled out of there is an odd number. And there are indeed 10 numbers there that are odd numbers. Now I'm going to get, why do I grab the wrong one? Now I'm going to get the multiples of 3. 3 is a multiple of 3. 6 is a multiple of 3. 9 is a multiple of 3. 12 is a multiple of But that's not 12. 15 is a multiple of 3. And 18. There are six numbers in that group. But look what you found. Okay, three is listed twice. Nine is listed twice. And 15 is listed twice. So we need to subtract out those three numbers that we named in both cases. So we have 10 out of 20 plus 6 out of 20. That makes 16 minus 3 leaves 13 out of 20. Okay. I know a lot of you probably could have generated these two things, or all three of these fractions, without going through everything I did here. I wanted to illustrate the point that some of these things are repeated, and look, here's how we know, because it's the same one. Okay, you don't always have to list things out like that. I just did to illustrate the point. What about this? What about the probability of drawing a king or a diamond? Okay, That would be the probability of getting a king plus the probability of getting a diamond minus the probability of both happening. Well, for the king, there's four chances out of 52 that you'll get a king. For a diamond, there's 13 out of 52. I counted the king of diamonds here. I counted the king of diamonds here. I need to subtract out the king of diamonds because I counted it twice. 4 and 13 is 17, minus 1 is 16, 50, 50 uh, seconds. Almost said 50 halves there. And then that reduces to 4 out of 13. So that's how you deal with the overlapping case. You have to subtract out the things that happen twice. Another idea we need to look at is the idea called the complement of an event. It's everything that's not the event. So, for example, if I roll a die and my event is rolling a 3, then the complement would be everything but a 3. Okay, A 1, a 2, a 4, a 5, or a 6. If I'm flipping coins and the event is heads, then the complement would be everything that's not heads, which is tails. Okay. Up here, the complement would be all the other 36 cards that aren't kings or diamonds. And the nice thing about probability with complements is if you take one, 100%, if you will, and subtract the probability that something will happen, that gives you the probability something won't happen. Okay, think back to 13.4 where we were talking about the simulations. And our hockey player had an 18% chance of making a penalty shot. And we said that means there's 82% that he won't. Okay, that's the same thing. We took 100% minus the 18 for success and got failure. 
We'll do the same idea here. We get all grumpy when they say 30% chance of rain. Well, the probability that it won't rain is 1 minus the probability that it does. 1 minus 0.3 is 0.7, or you could say 70%. Okay, got a 70% chance it won't rain, but we're focused on the 30% chance that it will. Just something to think about. So let's deal with this thing. According to a poll, 35% of American motorists routinely use their cell phones while driving. Naughty, naughty. So I'm going to pick three people out of a group of a hundred total. And I want to know the probability of finding that at least two of them use their phones while they're driving. Well, to have at least two of them means either I got two people who use and one who didn't, or I got all three that use. Okay? At least two means two or more. So two did or three did. All right. Now we have to do a little uh, probability calculation here. I've got a 35 out of 100 chance of picking one person who used. And then I've got a 34 out of 99 chance, because I've got one out of the pool now. So I've reduced it down. That's that dependent probability from the other day. 34 out of 99. And now, what's the probability that someone is not using? Out of those 100 people, 65 are not using. Now, we assumed we were going to pick the non-user last. We could have picked the non-user here, in the middle, or first. So there's three different ways we could have picked that non-user. When we multiply all that together, we get 0.237. The uh, fractions get rather large in the denominator, so I just went to decimals. Now we need to do the probability for three users. We have 35 out of 100 for the first user. Now there's one less in the pool, so there's 34 out of 99. Now there's another one gone, so we're down to 33 out of 98. Well, that is 0 0.040. So if we add it together, we get 0.277, or you could say 27.7%. Okay. Mutually exclusive, it's where things can't happen together. When they can't happen together, like in this case, it couldn't be both two users, one not, and three users. This was exclusive, so all we have to do is add. When there's overlap, we have to subtract out the double count. If you had questions along the way, hopefully you wrote those down. Bring them in with you, and we'll see you in class.